when you load Fear and Blackout down to subsonic levels, um, about 1,000 feet per second, even though it's a 230 grain load, a lot of times it's not enough gas to operate a carbine gas system. Okay, there we go. See, it's not that reliable. It's on the razor edge of cycling. Howdy folks, you're watching Deucing Guns. Today, we're gonna finally change out my 3 and Blackout barrel from the old one to a new 3 and Blackout barrel. Because remember, this is a 3 and Blackout setup or upper that I used in my black powder video where I shot black powder cartridges through my AR-15. I did that because I was gonna be changing out this barrel and gas system anyway, so if I ruined it, it didn't matter, I could just throw it into the garbage anyway. Now this whole process, this process of changing out this barrel will actually work for anything you wanna do. If you wanna change out your barrel from a long barrel to a short barrel, short barrel to long barrel, the same caliber, or if you wanna change out from a 223 or 556 to a 300 blackout, no problem, you can go ahead and use this exact same procedure. And if you're going from a 223 slash 556 to a 300 blackout, you don't have to change your bolt. But if you're changing calibers from a 556 or 300 blackout to a 6.5 Grindel or 762 by 39, you're gonna to have to change that bolt to a specific caliber bolt. We now have the gas block completely loose here, but we gotta get rid of that bird cage or whatever muzzle device you've got on the end of here because it won't slip over that. So, the best way to actually remove or tighten anything on the actual barrel is to lock down the barrel. How do you do that? Well, you can have a vice, actual vice grip set up to clamp onto the barrel itself, or what I prefer is a reaction rod. Now, we'd also use a receiver clamp, but personally, the actual reaction rod is better for muzzle devices. This is about the same, if not a little bit better for actually tightening the barrel nut. Now I'm just gonna use one of the commonly available wrenches for the barrel device here. It should come off pretty easily. And there's a little bit of rust there if you look at that closely. A little bit of rust from my black powder endeavors earlier. <laughs> You can't get them completely clean unless you completely break it down, and I did not do that. Now, if you recall from an earlier video, I had a heck of a time getting this thing torqued down enough to line up the actual gas tube. So, I took this all the way up to this maximum, which is 80 foot-pounds, and now we need to go ahead and loosen it up. Shouldn't be too big of a deal because I did use the correct grease on there, the molly whatever sulfide, line up the pins. Come on, baby, there we go. No problem whatsoever. Now, I've heated this thing up quite a bit and still had no problem. Oh yeah, the grease is still good in it too. Good deal. There we go. No problem whatsoever. And here's an excellent opportunity for me to show you how a reaction rod works. Basically, just a big piece of steel and it ends in the exact same size and shape of a actual Air 15 bolt. Let me get that cat hair off of there. All right, and that will coincide with the actual extension on the AR-15 barrel. So inside the actual receiver, that's actually timing or going right into the barrel and the receiver is actually just staying just along for the ride. And you got the barrel clamped in using its own bolt pattern. And now we're gonna take out the new barrel here. There we go. Let me show you what it is here. It's another 300 blackout barrel. This is not a surprise here, but it's got one big difference. And that is that it's a carbine length, you know, 16 inch carbine length barrel, but the gas tube, the gas port is at the pistol length and not the carbine length. So that's gonna give me a lot more gas to cycle that action. See, I've got several inches there between the carbine gas length and the pistol gas length, my bullet will actually produce that much more gas to cycle the action, which will make this a lot more friendly to my subsonic loads. This time around, I actually bought some official Aeroshell, well, 64. It used to be 33, but they've actually changed it to 64 recently because there's two different types of 33, Aeroshell 33 grease. One of them's great for this, one of them is not. So because of confusion, Aeroshell actually renamed the Aeroshell 33 to Aeroshell 64 as the proper grease that is also, well, it's used in aeronautics, but it's also used for the barrel installation. So let's go ahead and put this on here. 
And I know there are some safety sallies out there screaming the fact I'm not using gloves right now. Yeah, it's probably a good idea to use gloves. The second I use gloves, everyone calls me a pansy on the internet. The second I don't use gloves, everyone goes insane and says I'm going to drop dead tomorrow from cancer. So I'll wash my hands afterwards. I'll be fine. Okay, we got the threads greased. Now we're going to go ahead and just slide the barrel onto the upper receiver there. And you see there's a little knot right there on the barrel, the actual locator pin, and it goes into the notch on the receiver. Slide that onto the reaction rod. There we go. That slid right into the actual extension on the barrel. And now the barrel nut. There we go. Go ahead and tighten down here. Now GunTech has a special wrench for this barrel nut. So I went ahead and bought that just for ease of use. Now I actually contacted GunTech about the torque settings. What I should be torquing this barrel nut too, because this aluminum is pretty thin. And the guy just immediately said 40 foot pounds. There's no instructions with the actual, the actual barrel nut itself. But the guy on the phone said 40 foot pounds and he sounded like he was kind of pulling out of his butt. But usually, usually an aluminum barrel nut will usually max out about 50 to 60 foot pounds. So 40 is probably pretty safe. I will go ahead and do my normal 30, then let off, 30, let off, 30, let off. And I will go ahead and keep it in line with the torque wrench instead of having it to 90 degrees over. Because like I said in that last video well, that everyone kind of latched onto, it doesn't really matter. It, it's, it's so, it's such arbitrary setup to worry about. I'm not even going to worry about it anymore. There we go. Then put the wrench back onto my torque wrench and loosen it again. Notice I took the extension and put it onto a breaker bar because technically you're not supposed to use a torque wrench to loosen. There are some different guidelines with that. It's not that big of a deal. Not as much of a, a deal as people are led to believe, but whatever. Okay, third torquing width to 30. I'm gonna go ahead and take it up to 40 foot pounds. There we go, there's 40. Now let's see if that lines up, because that's the thing about it is that I don't have to worry about the gas tube. See, the gas tube floats right over that barrel nut, so that's not a big deal. But the actual hand guard does actually index on this barrel nut, so I need this lined up with my actual receiver. And it looks like that's going to work fine. And just to make sure I'm lined up correctly, I'm going to go ahead and install my Olight flashlight here and use that as an alignment tool between the two. Oh, it's beautiful. Perfect. That's awesome. Easy peasy. Wait, what am I doing? Almost got ahead of myself here. I got to take this back off and put on my actual gas block and gas tube. Jumping a gun. Deuce is all excited now. Here's my little gas tube. I have yet to find a gas tube that was bad or any better than the others. They're all so easy to deal with. I'm sure there's some specialty units out there for very special situations. But I was Joe like myself and most of you guys, not that big of a deal. So, got the gas tube. We got the pin to attach it to the gas block. Where is my gas block? I've got a little tiny gas block that goes on here. And uh, I don't, oh, there it is. And I got a little Yankee Hill manufacturing still. So it's very, very uh, robust, but it's still tiny. Very, very low profile as well. Okay, so the gas tube has a little hole in it right there. And that's going to coincide with the hole in the gas block right there. So you can see the end of the gas tube poking through the back of the gas block. And the hole goes right through, which is what we want to see. And now we have a tiny little roll pin, if I can find it, there we go. With the gas tube was included a tiny little roll pin that goes in there and secures this whole shebang together. Now I'm just going to go ahead and just clamp it in there with my pliers. Yeah, see it just slides right in there with pressure from your pliers. Now again, is that the best way to do it? And eh, probably not, but it works. Okay, now it just slides right on to the barrel. And because this is a clamp-on version, now there are several different types of gas blocks. Uh, we have great big adjustable gas blocks. We have very tiny ones here. 
There are some that are clamp on, there are some that are pinned. Now, a lot of people will tell you to space this actual gas block off the shoulder just a tad bit to align with the gas port. Now, some instances that's correct, some that's not correct. Basically, go by the manufacturer. What the manufacturer tells you how to set this up is how you should set it up. Uh, Yankee Hill Machine actually told me to put this right against the shoulder because that's what it's designed for. It is not designed to have a handguard in between it and the shoulder of the barrel. Now, if you're installing this sucker and you weren't using a traditional handguard, then yeah, you'd want to space this off because that's what this is designed for is to have this sandwiched right between it and the handguard versus this free float, not necessary. And this is built for a free float setup. Okay, here is the top of the handguard and here's the top of the receiver. I want that completely flush and perfect all the way across. Well, I've got some play there. So what I'm gonna do is, again, as I said before, I'm gonna take my flashlight, my Olight flashlight, which actually has a Picatinny rail clamp, and I'm gonna clamp that right in between, and that will make sure that everything is completely flat and smooth all the way across. All right, folks, I'm completely fresh out of 30 caliber crush washers. So I'm gonna have to get some more, this will just be a demonstration purpose only then, is the old crush washer that I took off the old barrel setup. And now we got my, still it's all in the reaction rod there. There we go. And now there are no real torque specs on these. There probably are somewhere, but you basically you tighten it down and you line it up and that's about it. It's really, oops. It's really not rocket surgery there. You just line it up as best you can and try not to hurt something. That's all you gotta do. Now there's more to it than that, but again, this washer's already been crushed, so I'll need a fresh crush washer to do this correctly. And I would line it up till the actual middle flash, I guess, hole is straight up. And yes, before you ask, I've got a new barrel and I'm gonna be using a used bolt, which means it's probably best that I check the headspace, which I will be doing for another video, but I will be checking the headspace on that. And the whole video will be focused around the procedure for doing that correctly. Now you didn't think I'd go through the video without shooting something, did you? Oh, it's nice and quiet. I'm gonna take an ear out and see uh, how quiet it is. Pretty quiet, pretty quiet. There we go. That's nice though, that's nice. Well guys, that's it for me today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give me a like and go and subscribe. A lot more is on the way. And if you have any comments, questions, or show ideas, go ahead and leave that in the comment box below the video. And of course, you guys have a great day. See ya.